All right, let's see if he's home today. Job. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of another episode of Dad's Garage here at Claremont Custom Cool. And before I begin, I'd like to thank all my subscribers, uh, but especially uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims of the Surfside calamity where the building fell down there in South Florida. Our thoughts, our prayers are with you. We're going to get through this together. Uh, and I also like to dedicate this episode to James. Uh, Mr. Albright, this is for you to show you a little bit more of the work that I actually do. So I do read your comments and I also like to dedicate this episode to a young gentleman by the name of Blake, who I had the pleasure of meeting at the downtown uh, home and garden show. Uh, Blake, so this is for you. But man, and I tell you what, this overall bill is, is dedicated to the Palm Beach Central High School. Uh, guys, this is all for you. I'm gonna keep doing these bills, but this bill is dedicated to you, so go Broncos. So today, we got a 2005 a Honda Aquatrax with the Black Hall. So we did a 2003 with the White Hall, we did my 2004 with the Red Hall, and now we got a 2005 Aquatrax with the Black Hall. This is gonna be a complete full trader up uh, restoration, kind of go through the whole thing. And I'm, I, can't, I can't be more excited. I'm gonna continue to do these builds because you guys love watching and I love doing them for you. So please make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification uh, so you can stay up to date. So again, I apologize for the lapse of uh, uh, the distance is just, I've had some medical setbacks, but that's not going to stop me again. Uh, when you think yeah, I have it rough, somebody out there has got it much worse than me. So get very excited about this build. So let's just get right into it. So this is a, a 2005. This gentleman uh, saw the, uh, the transformation we did on, on the last ski. Uh, so he came up from South Florida to visit me. Uh, we exchanged some pleasantries and here it is. So uh, we're excited uh, to, to do it for him. So we're, this is a really, uh, I just can't wait to get in. We've we actually got some parts that are here already. Uh, so today we're gonna go through some of the things that uh, you uh, haven't seen me done in the previous videos. That we wanna show you more of the work today. Uh, so we'll show you that, but the, let me just check this out. I mean, the rub rail needs to be replaced. The trailer, I mean, it is just really in bad shape. In fact, if you come around over here, and you can see it's very it's had a lot of decay. So we're gonna have that part welded. I've already got the, I've got a plan on that. So again, we're gonna do a trailer up. Uh, we had to place the jack stand because it was broken. But you can see it's missing a fender. Uh, there's just a lot of work. Some lights need to be redone. We're gonna replace the lights. Uh, just go through the whole trailer. Uh, and then of course, if you look at the, the ski itself, I already kind of started some of the work. Uh, I took off the mats, which were in very bad shape. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Uh, and the graphics, I took some of the graphics off already, uh, but I left a part of that on there so I could show you the process and what and the technique that I use on taking off the graphics. Uh, so we'll, wait, we'll have new graphics on the ski, a new rub rail, uh, and then uh, I tell you what, we got a few surprises, and I think one of the surprises is in that box today, and we're going to show you today uh, how what that is. Uh, so I, I think that's it. I think that's enough said. Uh, nothing to it, but let's just get to work. All right, so a lot of you have asked, you know, how I get things done and you want to see more of uh, the how-tos. So what I've done is I've taken a lot of the graphics off already to save time. But I have this one section off so I can demonstrate to you uh, the technique that I use uh, on removing uh, uh, graphics from the plastic here. Uh, and again, this plastic are so we have to be very careful. So the technique I use, I'm going to grab my heat gun. I'm going to grab my heat gun that I bought at Lowe's. Uh, and I tell you, I, I, I buy my, my stuff at Lowe's because they're more veteran friendly. So I, nothing gets home, home people and the fine people that work there. It's just that I prefer Lowe's because of that reason alone. Uh, you can go to Lowe's and save 10% uh, of your veteran on every purchase where versus Home Depot you can. So uh, Lowe's, uh, there you go. I don't have any sponsors, so uh, there's a famous, there's a plug for Lowe's. So uh, I bought this Craftsman. It's about $30, $40 at Lowe's. Uh, I'm going to plug this in and we're going to apply it some low heat. So let's do that first. Let's get this plugged in and get started. All right. So I got it plugged in. So I got my heat gun plugged in. I'm going to set it at a low temperature. And then I have uh, these non-marking blades that I'm going to use. As you can pick these up at Walmart. They're only uh, a couple of dollars, but they're, they're blades, but they're non-marking. So uh, they will do the job. They won't cut you unless you're really deliberately trying to, but uh, certainly they won't, they won't cut you. And then I'm going to use Goo Gone. So Goo Gone, where you at? Free advertisement. Uh, this is a great product to remove some of the adhesive that will be left over. I'm going to show you the technique for that, but Goo Gone 
Where you at, Lowe's, where you at? I need sponsors. Come on guys, giving you free advertising. <laughs> but anyways, let's just get right to work. I'm gonna show you the technique now. I'm gonna grab my heat gun, pardon me, switch around here. Again, I'm just gonna apply a little low heat. Let's grab this card here. And um, we're gonna move this plastic again. You don't want the heat too high because you don't want to damage the, the plastic. So I'm just gonna put this on a low speed, on low heat, just to kind of soften that up and warm it up a little bit. So I'm just gonna apply it directly right on here. Turn it up a little more. And let that soften up a little more. Let's go a little faster on the speed. To kind of get it started. And it should start to, you see, there it goes. It's starting to come up already. And once it gets going, you kind of work your way around it and you get it enough so you can grab it. There you go, right there. And then I get this heat gun and I kind of let it fall and watch how this just comes right off. Again, it's low heat, low speed. You know, see how I'm pulling it and applying the heat at the same time? Look at that, man. Look how that comes right off. That's the way to do it right there. Nice. Just kind of warm this up. Not burning it, just kind of warming it up. There we go. And look how that comes off. See, so I'm not damaging the plastic. But this one's coming off in pretty good. Get one shot. Hopefully I can get it all. Come on, one shot. Can I do it? Oh! Okay, we got it all off in one shot. That was pretty cool. So that's how they do that. That's it. So now you're left with, with the adhesive that's on there. It's, it's not very, you know, thick, but it is still tacky a little bit, but that's that's what's left over. So I'm going to heat that up a little bit as well. I'm watching my technique here. Just kind of warming up a little bit. Just kind of soften it up. That's what I want to do. Just kind of soften it up. Kind of let it start the material that makes up the adhesive to break down but again i'm, I'm just pulling light heat slow speed or moderate heat uh, at low speed so i don't damage the plastic and as you really can tell not enough heat you can see it's not working yet so then give this a little heat and now i've got heat on there to get glue on that right on there and really to make this work you want to let it sit a few minutes like that that's the thing you have to be patient with it. let it let it work uh, I have a tendency to go a little fast with it you have to have enough time uh, for the material to, to start to break down so you let it sit on there for just a moment or two and you'll see and you can see how it's wet it kind of shines that's the result we're looking for once we get to the plastic board uh, I'm gonna use some compounds and some uh, different polishes to uh, get the plastic to come back. I just kind of warmed that up a little bit. Again, I'm gonna use my non-marking blade. Let's see if that starts to break down. Again, it should wait a little longer, but for the video, I'm gonna keep moving here. And you can see, there it goes. It starts to come off. Look at that. And the trick is to, to warm it up a little bit, get that started, but you can see the gum coming off. Look at that, man. Again, this is a great product, but it, it really, does, you know, it's, it's, it's really not harm, it's harmful in the sense that you have to be careful, but you can handle it. Uh, that's why I'm not wearing gloves. You know, you could wear gloves to kind of protect your skin, but it doesn't really, it doesn't bother me, so I don't really wear gloves. But you can see, look at that coming off now. And I, I could have said it on there a little longer, but again, I'm a little, I get a little impatient with it, but look at, look at what it's doing. And I'm just using a very inexpensive microfiber towel to kind of work with it, um, because this towel will be ruined after this, so I'm not going to use it for anything else. So I want to just get an inexpensive towel or, or a microfiber towel or something to work with, because it's going to get messy. And you can see it. Let me, some, let me get some paper towels. One second. Paper towels. Like that. Okay. And if, I, if you see me walk a little bit more funny than normal, I, I told you I had some medical setbacks. I've actually fallen a couple of times. But the good thing is I'm chubby and I was able to bounce right up when I fell. Oh, anyway. It was no fun falling. I say, good thing I'm chubby and I'm able to get the bounce up. All right. 
see how that comes off. But it does, it does get very messy. Set that there. And spray a little more on there. And we'll start to really clean this up a little, it's a little thick here. Just spray a little more on there. Let it sit for a second. Let's see right there. Let that sit on there a little bit more. We really didn't heat that in that much, so that's why it's kind of on there too. Look how it comes off, see? Very easy to do. And that's the technique that I use. And again, this is not harmful, it's not harmful for the process. Um, the blade's not harmful for the process. This adhesive remover, the goo gone is not harmful for the process. And look at that, see? There's still a little bit left over. I'll clean up a little bit. That's when, I, that's when I use the towel. You got the final. Look at that, see? There's still some there, you can see. It's almost completely gone. And look what you left with. And that gives us more surface to work with it. Now I'm going to spray the towel on the top of it. Clean it up a little bit better. Spray it right on the towel. When I was in the service, I was a dental technician. We were taught when you're working on a patient to never say oops. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would not be good. So if I say oops, it's just, uh, I was trained not to say it, but I say it now. And there's some up here too, uh, from the previous uh, sticker that they had a sticker. Let me get that off there too while I'm at it. See a little bit of juice from the sticker. This, but you see, it didn't take, didn't take very long at all, did it? What, maybe five minutes or so? Look at that. See how it come off? Look at that. And then before we go to polishing, buffing and polishing, we'll, we'll make sure that everything's completely clean and removed again. Um, again, the idea of getting the result is to keep everything clean and organized uh, at the same time, but you want to have everything clean, so we'll wash it a couple more times before we actually start to buff right here. Yeah. Uh, so again, use the same technique with the gun or anything, and just follow up with it with the goo gun. And that should just about do it for this, this part of the video. And then, I think from here, we're going to get to the beef. So we'll show you that very next. But you can kind of see, and again, we'll clean this up a little bit more later when we get to when we get to doing the express trays on the top. But did you see how that works? Turns out pretty good. That, and that's the whole trick to it. So, there you go. All right, again, we'll clean this up a little bit later. Um, let me get some towels over there. wipe this off. All right, so now we're gonna get to the, uh, the business end of the ski. Uh, that is the engine compartment. Uh, and one of the things that you can see with the turbo is this, this massive uh, stock exhaust system, which is just, I don't even know what, it, compared to like a tuba in, in, from an instrument versus a, let's say a flute, the air has to breathe and it has to go through all this stuff. But for this build, we got a surprise. Let's check it out. Check this out. Whoa, dude. We're gonna have a custom exhaust for this ski. Check it out, man, look at that thing. So this will give it to, Number one, sound great. Uh, add a little horsepower, uh, and, and then this a little bit better throttle response. So this this is a straight pipe. So again, using the analogy of an instrument, you know, since so that was a tuba, and this is more like a flute, so they have better airflow. Again, the better airflow, uh, a little bit more horsepower and throttle response, and certainly is going to sound a lot better. Uh, so this comes from from Darren, uh, and we'll have a have a uh, promotion. I'll talk to you at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Uh, I'll tell you how to get these uh, and save a little money. So just stay tuned at the end for the, on the video you see. So, so we're gonna, this is, it came, look at the hardware it came in, man. Dude, this is awesome. You got nice stainless steel clamps. Let's check that out, man. <laughs> Holy smokes, man, look at this stuff. I mean, this is high quality stuff, clamps, stainless steel clamps. And then check this out, custom flange. Whoa, man, that is just off the chart there. Holy smokes, look at that thing. So very well made. Uh, very durable. It's going to make this thing sound uh, incredible. So, we say we grab some tools and get to work. Uh, and here's the couple. Here's the uh, couplers. I'm getting custom couplers. 
these are really nice. Check these out, dude. These are awesome, man. Holy smokes. I love the color on these. Look at that, man. That is amazing. So that'll go on, on one of the ends here. We'll figure that out. I forget which one goes where, but we'll figure all that out. Okay. So what do you say we get, get some, grab some tools and let's get started on taking this off. So I'm going to grab a wrench, a couple wrenches and some sockets. water line um, so you need it we need to take this off and then when we take it off we have to clamp it off uh, and, and secure it so that uh, obviously we're not going to need it anymore so uh, we have to run it straight through so I'm going to start there let's take this little um, for the tow rope let's take that off Taking off the water, I'm gonna cut this little zip tie. I'm gonna try to anyway. Okay. And this should come out. How easy I don't know. Let's try. This is the water line, so we're gonna have to seal that off later. But once we get the exhaust off, uh, I'll put a cap in there and zip tie it up, make sure it doesn't need to, but you won't uh, do it right. Okay, so that's all. Now, let's start taking this off the exhaust. Now, with the new one, you have to make sure that it's torqued right, and the way it identify that when we get the new one on is that the bolts we flush with the flange and we'll show you that when we get to that point that's how you know you have the right amount of torque on there I'll do this systematically take this off next okay. 
I'm using the hand because I like the feel of it. I don't want to damage anything else with the electric ratchet. I'm going to pour this one. And there should be one down here. This is the one that's a little trouble. So let me um, see if I can get well, the short twelve. I've got a short one. You have to use an, a ratchet with an angle on what you got. I don't think it's loose enough. I might be able to grab it by hand. Let's try. No, not yet. Oh, almost by hand. But that's the way to do it. Is using this short number 12 with an angle on there to get to this one bolt that's really buried underneath here. Sure. Yeah, it's turning. Yeah, it's turning. Let's get this one completely out. Let me go back to the top notes. boys I love you guys So that was a real uh, challenge there. Again, the trick is to use a ratchet with a swivel on it and a number 12. So that really uh, helps things there. So now let's, have, let's take the rest of them off. This should be uh, pretty easy. So I'll show you downhill from now. Let's get the number 12 again. I think we're using right. Yeah, there we go. disconnected momentarily now we're gonna to have to muscle the um, muffler out of the water box the water box will stay in place once the um, custom exhaust uh, is on there and it's okay if it stays in place it's just dead weight 
had no purpose, but it's not gonna harm it. If there's water in there or whatever, it's not gonna harm it. It, it just serves no purpose. But to get it out, you'd have to almost remove the engine or to, to cut it cut it out, which I'm thinking about doing in my school. So that's that one. It basically, it should be loose, and it is. Okay, so now we're gonna get this here. I'm gonna save this flange here because we're gonna reuse this. It's very important. I'm gonna save this piece right here. I don't want it to break or, in, or anything. So you want to reuse this flange right there. And I took a picture on on, on, on the positioning, that's very important. And we used some Permanex uh, gasket maker on it, so high temperature one, I'll show you that. But so this is the flange, you want to save that. Okay, or the gasket. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. Now we're going to unscrew those little clamps there. I'm going to have a small one for that. And it's going to take a seven. This back on the seven. Yeah, here we go. We got seven here. We loosen these clamps up. Right here, it's got a clamp down here. We take that off of there, and we get this tuba off of here, and we get a straight pipe going. Get this thing roaring. Up the clamp. Alright, clamp's nice and loose. Now, let me grab some gloves. We are going to extract them up for now. Try to extract it without having to take another clamp off. Let's see if we can extract it. Let's put some gloves on here. This is where a little muscle comes in handy. I'm gonna get some gloves on here. Let's see what we can do. All right. This is the fun part. Now, inside this muffler, there's an elbow on the bottom that goes in the water box. If I need I'm gonna just manhandle this. I have to get the other one off. I have to get another clamp off to the bottom there. Another clamp on the bottom on this side over here. Get to it.
I forgot how to do. See what I mean? So this is a factory muffler, and it just doesn't give the turbo a chance to breathe. So now with the straight pipe, we're gonna put some bottom on this, on this gig, and it's gonna scoot along the water real good now. So you can see the difference between that and, uh, sorry about my breath a little bit, and this. Way, way cooler, man. All right, so let's put this inside. Fairly smooth. So there's, there it is. Now here's the water box. Again, if it comes useless now, it's just dead weight. So we're gonna uh, unclamp this one and get the get the new exhaust come on. Let's do that next now. Okay. That one got the best of me. Almost almost put my pants in that one. Thank God. I didn't. All right, here we go. Number six. Yeah. Here we go. This is this one. Alright, this is a seven, I'm sorry. I said six, it's a seven. They don't put these clamps in the best spot because they don't want you to take them off. Let's see if I can, let's try this. I can't really see it, so it's come out. Well, she don't want to come off. She's going to though.
this one was the zip. There we go. Yeah. Okay, there's the there is right there. Okay, hold that. Let's hold that there. You got Angel? Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. I love this tool. It was only like, I don't know, like $19. I get, I get my lows, but uh, this definitely comes in handy. All right. So now, let's, let's show what we did on the, on the old stuff. Um, so again, here's, here's the old muffler and exhaust. And you can see where the flanges are. Um, there's a certain way that it goes in. So this is how it faces into the ski. And those bolts, there's for the flange. There's three of them. And that gasket goes on there. We're going to put some Permax and seal that up with a gasket maker. Again, it's a high temp gasket uh, sealer that I'll show you. Uh, and then this is one of the uh, uh, external exhausts. So all that's off of there. So we're gonna go from that into the straight pipe. So let me, grab, let me wash my hands and we'll, we'll get the new pipe on there. Because I'm handling new stuff and my hands are a little kind of, I don't know, I have to keep my new stuff clean. meat and potatoes for today's operation. So here's here's the new exhaust, uh, the couplings, the hardware with the, the nice stainless steel clamps. I'll show you those. It's just like this, like this, like this. Let's grab the flange. Again, this well-made stainless steel flange uh, that'll go on, on onto the exhaust and onto the uh, um, ski. So let's, let's do that first. Let's get this going here. Let's get a little WD before you make that slide. Very well made. 
put those on there. I think that's going to be a 6 2. It might be an 8. Let's check it out. shakes it's just because of the you know like Parkinson's isn't it? WD-40 just sort of slides on easier. It's not that really handy with the left over. Thank you. 
Now, get one bolt in place. Okay, so we're going to continue to loop this up here. Get this on here. Okay, and we'll get some more clamps.
some on there. three holes are lined out. We, we, it's a little bit uh, challenging. So you, you put WD-40 on the coupling, put that on there. It's got an elbow. We put WD-40, slip the coupling on there. That's to the uh, back part of the exhaust. But the most important thing is to make sure you have the Permanex uh, gasket maker in there, which we did on both sides. So we get a nice seal. So we have no exhaust leak. I had this all the way slid up to the end here and we'll tighten those down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening it back. Now again, how you know that it's torqued in the right way is that these bolts will be flush with the back part of the uh, flange. That's how you know you have the right torque. So obviously it's, this is not torqued right because it's not finished. Tighten down, we're gonna start tightening down now. I'm gonna use this one first, because it's not the hardest. We're moving, slow but sure. Holy smokes, man. I want this to go down even, so I'm gonna tighten a couple of, give me the orange right there.
All right, that's even there. So let me show you, I'll, I'll, I'll show you on this one. So this is how you know when you got the right torque. You see this hole right here? It's almost flush. That This bolt should be flush even with the flange. And that's how you know you have the right amount of torque on there. And just about there. Okay, and flash that there. That one here. And let's take a look at that. Now, you see here, see this bolt? It is, it is flush even with the flange, so that means we have the right amount of torque. It's, it's designed, the way Darren designed it is to make sure uh, that you got a good seal, no exhaust leak. That's the indicator to know that we have the right amount of torque when it's flush like that. All right, so let's do this. Both of those are done. Let's make sure that the bottom is flush too. And that should do it for today. Let's see. The last thing we're going to do is uh, put these clamps and, and tighten the clamps down and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and tighten these. I, I kind of like them like this where you can, they look cool and you know, you have easy access. You want to make it easy in case you have to go back in there. So I'm going to tighten this right about here. Using the number 10. Oh yeah, baby. there we go. Look at that. <laughs> Holy smokes, dude. Yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about, Chief. There. Yeah. There we go. I'm gonna put these nice and tight. That way I can jump around a little bit. But again, I want to thank Darren. And so the, the Prizes at the end of the video, we're gonna uh, let you know that you can get this this exhaust on eBay. But I'm gonna tell you, if you subscribe to the channel, if you're a current subscriber, just send me an email at claremontcustomcools at yahoo.com. That's C L E R M O N T C O O L S. Uh, Claremont Custom Cools at yahoo.com. Did I say that right? The C L E R M O N T S U S T O M C O O L S. Claremont Custom Cools at Yahoo.com. And if you send me an email, I can give you the direct line. If you call Darren directly, you can save the $25 shipping cost. Essentially, you'll save $25. But you gotta be a subscriber uh, to contact me and I can give you that number. Uh, again, it's a great guy. Uh, it's a great system that he developed and uh, we wish him the best help. So let's just finish tying this down. I think that's gonna be about it for today. Uh, we're gonna test it on the next video, so I know you're dying to hear what it sounds like. I'm gonna continue to dress up the engine. And then we'll let you uh, hear what it sounds like. So when you finish tightening it down, we'll close up here in a minute. So that concludes today's video, I think. Uh, that's enough for today. Uh, you saw how we got the uh, graphics off with the heat gun and the uh, glue gun. Uh, and then also how we installed our custom exhaust. And just want to say, uh, also give a shout out to CJ Power Sports for the things that I need that I can't do myself with the, with the engine. CJ Power Sports in Winter Haven at Center Florida is absolutely fantastic. Now, good news here for you guys is if you're a subscriber or a new subscriber and you live in Central Florida, you can just mention that you are a subscriber to Dad's Garage and you'll get 10% off your entire service invoice. It could be a very significant savings. So I want to thank you all again for the love support. Thank you to my family. Thank you to Angel, my director. Uh, thank you to Jessica, my editor. I really appreciate what you guys do for me. I, I love you all. And uh, just remember that uh, no matter what you're going through, there's faith, love, and to always follow your dreams.